Hey guys, I heard there were some trades this month in MLB, the world of baseball, so I thought I would just take a look at it and see what I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my! No way, they did it! They actually traded him! Wow, that's incredible. Welcome to the Sports World 1869, a world so large you're a part of it whether you know it or not. Unless you were living on a rock this entire month, you probably know that in MLB there were a bunch of trades that took place between obviously July 1st and July 31st. And we are going to talk about it here and right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through in the next series of videos, I'm going to go through every single trade that happened and give you my direct thoughts about how I think that trade is going to impact the team as well as the rest of the baseball world and more importantly give you at the very end what I think is going to happen in the postseason and beyond after these trades have just happened. So let's get started. So the first team we're going to start with is the Pittsburgh Pirates and they were quite busy which is important because the Pirates right now have been kind of in the bubble because they have been in the playoffs the past few years but they haven't seemed to get past the first round or in case of last year, a one wild card game. So let's talk about who they acquired first. They got Aramas Ramirez from the Brewers, and the Brewers got Jonathan Barros. They also received Joe Blanton from the Royals, and they got Joachim Soria from the Tigers, and they got Jay Happ from the Mariners. And Ho and and Michael Morse from the Dodgers. And they made a bigger trade, which I will discuss in a moment. Well, eventually. It's it's down the road here. Anyway, so let's talk about those players they acquired. First, Aramis Ramirez is very nice because, as you know, he started his career as a Pirate. And he is now going to finish his career as a Pirate. Also, because Jordy Mercer and Harrison are hurt, they had to get some guy who could play the infield. And they got Aramis Ramirez, so that was very good. Uh, Joe Blatton isn't that great, but they needed some kind of help in the bullpen. Joachim Soria is very good because Watson and Hughes were being overused with Melanson. We got a guy in the middle between those two in Joachim Soria, so that was a good deal. And Michael Morris is having an average season. I would say actually below average, especially if you look at what he did last year with the Giants. So they got some power with him, and hopefully that's going to help out. Overall, how the Pirates do, they did fine. They have a very strong playoff team every single year. They were very patient. They've got a very strong group of good, young, up-and-coming players, and in case of McCutcheon, veteran players. And I think Aramis Mary is going to help them a lot. I think Yakim Sur was probably the most important person they got because they have good hitting, and they got good pitching. They just need a little more help in the relieving area, and unfortunately because A.J. Burnett will not be with them for a bit, they need some kind of starting pitcher, they got Jay Happ. So overall, not the worst thing for the Pirates. They look, they look pretty good. The next busy team was the New York Mets. Here's what they did. First, they got Juan Uribe and Kelly Johnson from the Braves for John Grant and Rob Whalen. Now, the Mets are right now... They're almost in the mix against the Nats. I mean, they are in the mix. They got more wins, but they have more losses, so they're not in first yet. But they are basically there. So the Mets felt like they need some kind of players to help them out. So they got Juan Uribe and Kelly Johnson. They also got Tyler Clipper from the Athletics. And the big one, which everyone was going crazy about on the 31st, was Joanna Cespedes. In case you don't know why, that's very significant. He won the Home Run Derby in New York a few years ago, so the fans are very impressed with him as a home run hitter and a power guy. So he's going to be on the team. Clippers can help with the bullpen a little bit. The rotation of the Mets has been fine. Offense has not. That's why they got these players like Juan Uribe and now Joanna Cespedes. And they look like a great team. I don't know they can go far in the playoffs if they even make the playoffs, but they definitely improved on the offense because their star rotation is incredible with DeGrom, Syndergaard, and Matt Harvey. And Naiz Nice is not bad either, and if Matt was healthy, they'd have him as well. But they look really good. Overall, they did fine. I don't see them going very far in the playoffs. I could be wrong, but I still feel as if they need some more issues. I think their closer familia isn't doing that well either, so you got to deal with that problem. I'm not entirely sure, but I just don't. I'm not seeing it yet. I'm seeing a good team that's hungry, but I don't see a team that's going to win. The next team, which really really has got me on their side in terms of being 
a strong contender for getting for going all the way is the Houston Astros. The first major trade they did was they got Scott Casimir from the Athletics for Daniel Mengen and Jacob Nottingham. And what's good about Casimir is that he's not an ace of this team. Dallas Keiko is. He's not even the number three guy. That would be Colin McHugh. He may not even be the number four guy because I mean the three guy because you got um, McCullers. But you have a strong rotation now with him, and the offense has been fantastic. They're not Blue Jay territory of offense, but they're very good, and the rotation has been solid. So this was a really huge pickup uh, for the Astros. They also did another big blockbuster, blockbuster deal. They got Carlos Gomez and Mike Fires from the Brewers. Now, they were originally supposed to go to the Mets, but Carlos Gomez wasn't apparently his injuries or... He couldn't pass a medical test. That's why Wilman Flores of the Mets was crying on the field because he thought he was traded. I don't know. It was kind of weird, but some people get very emotional in this game, so that's just how it is. Anyhow, this is very huge for this team because Gomez is a good outfielder to help them out, and he's a good hitter too. And Mike Fires they'll have for a few years anyways, so that was a good pickup, and they're both really good players. And it's because of these three players that got... I, I feel as if the Astros are going to go places. And, of course, the Brewers got lucky, too, because they picked up uh, Brett Phillips and Domingo Santana, two really good players, but especially Brett Phillips. That was one guy who's going to be really good down the road. So the Brewers definitely did a good job with the trading there. But the Astros look like uh, they look like the real deal right now. They've really, they really—they didn't make a lot of big acquisitions, but they got the ones that mattered. I mean, I shouldn't say that. They, they got big acquisitions, but not many acquisitions because they want to – a few players to fix their overall very solid team. The St. Louis Cardinals are already a solid playoff team. Probably a World Series team. But they decided to do things anyways. The first player they got was Steve Ciszek from the Marlins and they gave a Kyle Faircloth. Now, the reason why this is a good trade because I looked at Steve Ciszek. They have him for a long time. And if this guy can get back to where he was last year with his 39 save year with the Marlins, you got a pretty good reliever there, and the Cardinals did very well in getting him because even though they have a very good back-end bullpen with Rosenthal, Holy Walden comes back, Manus, and you got Segris, Choate, guys like that, this will just help them even further. And another reliever they got, Burger Boy, a.k.a. Jonathan Broxton from the Brewers. Broxton's not that great. Uh, there was a lot of hate on the Cardinals, specifically Mazalock, for making this deal. I'm not sure what they expect out of Broxton, but if he's aimed at the Broxton last year for the Reds in the first half, you got something, but he's not playing like that. So I wouldn't expect too much. Uh, the last guy that got a, a first base bat in Brandon Moss from the Indians for Rob Kamenitsky. I don't like the guy they traded. The Cardinals, he's a good pitcher. They're going to regret that a few years down the road. Brandon Moss is a good hitter. He strikes out a ton, but he's got power. And he walked off with the Cardinals the other day, so he's definitely a good player. They needed a first baseman since Adams went out and Reynolds and Scruggs were kind of, you know, back and forth platooning. But it wasn't really that great. So having this guy, Brandon Moss, is good. I wish they got Adam Lynn instead, but I guess this was the best they could do. 